it's not a something that somebody can just come and say, oh, okay, I'm going to stop, I'm going to press a break, you know, and everything going to become okay. No, it takes a lot of effort. And what are the efforts being applied by this government? Please share to it? with me so I can what? share. Hello? Yeah, go ahead, my call. Okay. So it takes a lot of the question is what are this uh, what 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 are the things this government doing to make things turn around? For example, I can tell you uh 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 uh, uh see I was with the legislature years back. I know the international community has been recommending for years for us to carry on a harmonized civil service structure, you know, and we failed to do that. We were spending money that were not even hours for the past 12 years, even before George Ria took power. When before George Ria took power, we have millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars going to Liberia in aid, in grants, through loans and stuff like that, that we should have used to invest in other sectors like the agricultural sector, like developing the vocational skills of a nation that will that have, uh, have been brain drained due to the civil war. But all of this money we were paying people what twenty thousand dollars, eighteen thousand dollars. One person like at Maritime having half million dollar US every year for travel allowance alone. People having five hundred, one thousand, two thousand or gallons of fuel per month. So we spend money that were not ours, and we got in a very, very unfortunate situation, especially when we experienced the Ebola crisis. When the Ebola crisis uh, came, now we started to actually see that we did not do what we should have done, because even our health sector could not resist or were not sophisticated enough to even fight that epidemic. OK, that led to a lot of other things. But then uh, we went to the situation where even companies left. And all of the negative effect that those uh, things had on our economy, the United Nations was leaving. When the United Nations was leaving, then we had a situation where all of our NGOs and stuff that are supporting us were also pulling out. Now it was becoming the issue of the government responsibility to take care of herself. George Riyadh became president just last year, January. January of last year, George Riyadh became president less than two years since he became president. When he became president, we had over 2,000 healthcare workers that were being paid by our partners, George Ria had to take care of those people. So George Ria inherited almost $290 million in recurring expenditure. When vol of, vol of foreign aid grants and whatsoever, the country cannot even raise $500 million in revenue. So you have what? At least over 65 to 70% of the revenue raised or generated going to recurring expenditure. Taking over such a country as a president and then looking at the, the, the skills, we are lacking skills. For years we fought war, people don't have the, 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 the ordinary skills like welding. Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Ren. Let me see there. Mr. Just quickly. Okay. So when we look at all of these things, George, we are taking over and in under two years, we see the amount of developments that are going on in Liberia. I know the Liberian people, most cases we are worried, which is true. Every man wakes up every morning, he worry about what his family will eat. That's true, but all of those things, it takes time, it takes process for us to have an appreciable economy. But notwithstanding, George, we are government right now took over a country that you had less than 10% of the people having access to electricity as you speak. There is a, there is a, 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 a rigorous effort to increase that percentage. Now, as you speak, you go across Montserrat County that people will tell you, if you, since we are here, people will tell you that there have been new light poles, wires and things, hopefully by December or, or March later of next year, when we dedicate this, the, the six news or, or, or transmission uh, area across the country going to have to let so we'll, we'll get to those details of uh, i want to go i want us to go step by step uh, I, I know you're talking about lights uh your government told us that you are breaking lipo for 
the RRA and we didn't see them. We we're told that the light posts were even, you know, around, you know, and all that was left was for those light posts to be planted so that lights would be on the RRA highway. We are yet to see that, but let's leave it there. Let's look at the economy, let's look at the economic indicators. Because Mr. Ware, uh, your government survival depends on the economy. Your political survival depends on the economy. And it is only the economy will tell the people that you are representing that you are delivering those things that you promised them. So let's look at the key indicators economically. Number one, let's look at growth. The IMF in recent time projected that our country, Liberia, will not experience any economic growth until 2024. And it even put that growth rate to be around 0.4%. And depending on the government putting into place the necessary measures that will kickstart that growth. Now, that is to say that we're not going to experience any growth between now and after the 2003 election. So is we are, or is this government performing when in fact the forecast that we have shows zero growth? So I don't, I don't know, I don't know where you got your information from about the IMF, but uh, I, I think I got a different information. Uh, the IMF, I, I have not read any document from their website, which in fact I'm looking at right now that uh, spoke about we will not experience growth until 2024. So I think the foundation- It was widely reported and we all read it. So the records are read out there. Read it from you where? Understand. So I think if you want to uh, be sure uh, for such information, I will advise you. I, I'm sure, go that's, go. Why I, that's why I quoted that record. So but no, go but ahead. I'm telling you now that your, the source of your record website, your official website uh, never said anything of such. If you want me to read, or line specifically in reference to what you're saying, I can do that for you. But the source of that information is not correct. Yes, so it's true that. Make your point yes, and let it let it public be the judge. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. I, I want to. I love my point to be a uh, premise on uh, you know the facts. It is true that the Liberian economy, you know, uh, uh, contracted. Right, we experienced well a little growth last year. And uh, this year, obviously, we uh, the projection was when. Uh, Did when, you say uh, you experienced oh, growth last year? Oh, yeah, we experienced a 1.2 percent growth. That's part I, of the 200 and around 240 million dollar budget shortfall that was reported by Samuel Twain. Oh, you listen, now you reference the IMF. I am telling you that the IMF. At, at, they, they are credible. I know Liberian people believe foreign sources more than our own. So I'm using the IMF. The IMF itself said Liberia experienced 1.2 percent growth in 2018. Okay, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we experienced a little growth last. 1.2 percent is not a is not a good growth. Okay, but that growth that we experienced last year, in fact, the whole issue of growth, I, I you know. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of a tricky thing I tell people. You know, when you use this, these uh, uh, international indicators to talk about growth in country like Liberia versus country like America or, 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 or developed country, most of the times those indicators, the effect of growth on the people are kind of a different from country to country. I'm not saying we shouldn't use them or we shouldn't respect them. We should use them, we should respect them. But for example, if you talk about growth rate in America, you say two, three percent growth rate. That would be a realistic growth because you will see that growth in because we're in America, the circular flow, the circular economy is working. Okay, in Liberia, that we have no uh, structure, no foundation, no institution, no real dependable sector in terms of manufacturing. We don't fear ourselves when we discuss growth in, in Liberia, for example. You can, we, we, we know our history, go back to our history, we have what we call growth for our development, right? Yeah. Okay, that that period we're experiencing uh, one of the highest growth on earth. Yeah. But that growth was never reflected in the country, in the lives of the people. That growth was not really reflected in our infrastructure. And, and, and Mr. Ura, in the okay. case you are talking about GDP, correct? 
Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So because, for example, or uh, uh, see, doing Ellen Town, some of the growth we're boasting about. You know what the growth we're boasting about? We're boasting about, uh, 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 for example, uh, people going in the oil sector. They come, they say, oh, we will invest this amount of millions of dollars in the oil sector. They take 40 million, 45 million, they give the, go the, the, the government for signing bonuses. Those 45 million, all of them help to what? All of them are reflected in our GDP uh, calculator, right? Or uh, uh, the 100 billion, or the so called 2.5 billion dollar investment from Meta Street, all of those things. But in reality, the ordinary man in Grand Cru County, in Lofa County, that cannot afford uh, uh, access to health and in his life will not be affected by those growth. Okay, so when we talk about growth, using those international indicators, which they are good, and you know, but we should not discuss it in isolation to the reality. If we look at the, the George Real led government has to speak, talk to people vote of politics. They will tell you that yes, things are hard, but the amount of, you go all in the communities across Liberia, the roads are being built. I know people say we will not eat road, but look at what we are today. Factories are coming up gradually. Prior to George Real taking over, what, what the, those sectors were depending on what most of the United Nations paying workers in different, different areas. But look at where we are today. In Liberia, we just opened a, a very large steel factory, right? That we, 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 were, we will get to the productive aspect uh, of the of the of the economy or the manufacturing aspect again. Let me let okay. me let, no, let quickly let me, before you you made one statement uh, you talk about light poles, right? Mm -hmm. On the Ralphie right. Road. Let me address right. that quickly. The okay. light poles you are referencing on the Ralphie Road, my dear brother. Are you aware that right now, as we speak, this current dry season, the route fee road is going to be expanded? This is all we hear from the okay, government. Yeah. Well, you got to hear it. My man, the government, this the government is all we just hear. happy overnight. It's Mr. a Mr. Well, an event. You can get Mr. wake up and see a new road. That road, they have to be solved there. They have to they have to carry on a feasibility study to know how much it will cost, how the road will be designed, and all of those things before they come out to tell you exactly, oh, this is what uh we are going to do, this is how much it will cost, and which company is going to do the work. So you have to hear it first before it starts to happen, my dear brother. So I can tell you, putting light poles on the road when you're going to expand the road to at least give it a better face lift, uh, to meet some original standard when people like you go back home. You cannot be uh, uh, driving on uh, uh, such a horrible road like we have right now. Mr. Well, until we see those things, um, we will be able to believe that. But here's the thing. Let's look at, you, are, you, you brought in the aspect of projects that development projects are going on. One of your wildly advertised project is this so-called uh, coastal highway. The coastal highway, the government wanted to achieve it so much that it went to a private investment firm that we've never heard of before to acquire about a billion dollars. Uh, even the IMF and World Bank cautioned the Liberian government to not do that. The government went ahead and, and did that anyway. And they ratified it at a 4G speed in less than two days overnight. One would think that uh, the money will have been secured now, and one would also think that the coastal highway will be in full swing. So what is the start of the coastal highway as we speak? Well, uh, my dear brother, you see, like I said, like, you know, it gets frustrating sometimes when I discuss Liberia because I think Liberia, everybody wants to be in politics and uh, people say all kinds of things. But the reality is, I will continue to remind you that development is not even as a process. And I love the word you use. This government was so desperate. And that's the reason why some of us supported this government, because we felt that the government was going to come with so much hunger to develop and transform our country. It's true. When the government came, they were hungry, you know, wanting to see. Uh, look, I, I was in Liberia and I went across Liberia and during the rainy season, my dear brother, the entire southeastern region, people in Grand Gidea, Riverside, Sino, Maryland, Grand Cru, they are disconnected from the rest of the country. Commodity prices doubled, quadrupled. You know, 
things that are sold for ten dollars during the rainy season in Liberia, in the rural part, they are sold for sometimes fifty dollars, even as far as seventy five dollars. And what what's the actual cause of those issues, those challenges, is rule, the lack of rule. People leave from Maryland and go to Africa to go get commodity that they could get it in Liberia or for cheaper price because of the lack of rule. So when the government came, they said, "Why well, rule got to be our priority," which is very uh, 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 brilliant because without rule, I don't know how all these so-called development will talk about how we expect them to go on, especially in the rural part. So. Since it is not a, a even, the government started a process and it went beyond some private company that they talk to uh, make money available quickly, which was nothing wrong. They never obligated the country to anything until those people had the capacity. And those people are willing to lend the government money beyond the regular uh, concessionary uh, rate that we get from our other partners. So it was going to be a complete win for the country whatsoever. But unfortunately, the deal did not go through. That did not stop the government appetite or hunger for uh, making sure that we get rule. Uh, what uh, happened? Why, why did the deal not go through? What happened? What went wrong? Well, I don't think that even matters because the truth is the company never had the capacity to provide the funding at the end of the day. So if they never had the capacity, they could not provide the funding. We never obligated the country to anything. We did not lose anything in the process. So. Well, that's it. But Mr. Anyway, Ware, are you aware well, that the national legislator, the lawmakers, were able to ratify that agreement and the president did affix his signature, making that agreement law? And so for you to sit here and say, oh, that was said the company was never obligated to us. I mean, someone listening to you will say that we want these guys, they didn't listen. No, see, 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 it, it, it does not work like that, my dear brother. How does it work? This is the agreement. Okay. okay, this company said we have the capacity to provide. I think why it will have billion dollar, five hundred million dollar. You know that will go into rules and building other structures and things across the country. Okay, and the government said, "Wow, well, well, you get the capacity." Say yes, okay. But for us to do this, to have the assurance, we got to go through all of the legal framework. What is the requirement for the government? Well, if the government have to go in such a, a agreement. Obviously, the legislature is the one actually that we be able to initiate the process and then uh, signed by the president. They went through everything. And at the end of the day, the company could not provide the funding, which means the document right there is, 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 is not involved. It, it, it got no legal binding. It, 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 it does not uh, obligate the country or put the country in any debt to anybody whatsoever. But the most, the, I come in, brother. The most important issue is that go to the government desire for rural infrastructure across the country. The government went beyond that and went to our, our, our traditional partners. We went to Equus Bank. Equus Bank provided, which is is a done deal now. Uh, 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 the assurance that it will give us hundred million dollars for that same corridor. That's a eastern, uh, that uh, coastal highway corridor we're talking about. But Mr. Ray, you were also assured by Eton. You were also assured by Eton and Ibomar, and it did not materialize. So why should yes, we? Yeah, why should we keep repeating? I don't. I don't like to. I don't like to be. You know, uh, uh, repetitious. You know, because the reality remains: we that deal did not go through. You and I know it. And okay. Liberia is not obligated to anybody because why well, we never got anything from them. So no okay. need for all the waste our energy. Let's go to the actuality, the constructive part of what will move our country forward. Okay. And that part is where I am, I am focused on. ECOWAS Bank has uh, 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 committed providing $100 million for that same corridor. Uh, that $100 million, $50 million has already been approved, which hopefully I am told from reliable sources in government that this uh, coming dry season, we are going to see, uh, see uh, a work starting on that uh, corridor. We're going to start the process from where, from uh, Sino going to Grand Coup towards Maryland. Why the government is still negotiating for additional funding for that same corridor. But beyond that, since we own rural infrastructure, we also have funding uh, just recently uh, the, at the spring meeting that the finance ministry just concluded and we have funding available, both in grant and concessional loan for the rural 
from what? Konya. I don't know if you know what Konya is in Lofa County, but I have no, no I have no idea. idea. Go ahead. I went there 2009 to investigate when a girl there called Kapo Kamara got killed and brought the rift between the Muslim and the Christian crisis. I was one of those on the Senate team that went there to investigate that situation. So I know Konya very well. And I know how horrible that, that, that role was. So early Justice Ellie government started a negotiation that uh, uh, kudos to them that should have uh, taken the role from, from Banga towards Vonjiman. But all of the money were not uh, 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 sold. So the rule were to come uh, from Banka to Zoso, Zoso to Konya. Now, George Ria government have succeeded in getting the remaining funding to take the rule from Konya all the way to Vonjima City. Okay. And beyond that, we also have funding too for the rule from Ganta going towards Tapita and subsequently onwards to what? Grand Jida County or uh, uh, Zweju in Grand Jida County. See, you know, when I'm speaking about these rules, has somebody that have experience that have driven on these roads and know how, how horrible, how pitiful our people's lives are in those counties because of the lack of access to good roads. It can be so emotional for me. I remember in, in split seconds, one of my experiences, the uh, by-election, I brought this paper to the Senate. I'm sure you remember his name, uh, uh, Nathaniel Williams. I heard uh, that name, I think drove, I met him yeah, before. Yeah, directly we drove uh, uh, from, from, from Monrovia, my, uh, who friend and brother who was a CDC vice chairman for uh, operation at the time, Adama Samula, who went to run our Kennedy campaign against that papé. My dear brother, we passed by somebody from uh, a town, I forget the town name, but it's like the first time we were G County. They were toting the person in hammer to carry the person as far as fish time to hospital. Because why? There was no rule. My brother, we got to appreciate the effort of this government. Beyond that role, uh, uh, those roles I talk about, we also, the government came to power, President George, we have made sure that Sila Meta made true her commitment we, uh, for roles from where? From Ganta to Senequele, Senequele uh, to, to, to look at who. Mr. Ray, thank you for being able to highlight the developmental projects that your government has been trying to undertake. Um, what we have come to understand, the government has shown some effort, whether honest, sincere or not, at least the government has shown some express will uh, in the area of infrastructure development. The role is one example. Uh, we also know about the dual community role where the statue was constructed. I don't know how long that piece of road is. So maybe when the coastal road is done, there might be maybe 20,000 20, statues. But that is not a point. But what I'm trying to bring to you here is that the precedent personal projects, I can say they are all done. But initiative or projects undertaken by the government, they are yet to be completed. One of such is the military hospital. The most talk about or so-called military hospital. That project has been ongoing now for a year, a little over a year, but the president personal project, the 9th Street, the 47 condominium, but Smith to be said recently in the interview on Seku Kane show that there are 17 units. So, I mean, where is this government focus? What is the government priority? The, the president personal project or or developmental project that the government want to undertake because the, the president projects are completed, but you know, government projects are yet to be completed. You know, uh, 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 my dear brother, you know, that's that's petty to borrow from a Frenchman, you know, that's petty uh, uh, propagandism. You know, we, we cannot go that route of uh, trying to create a correlation between public projects and the president or uh, personal project. It matters, and Mr. That, I come in, it I, I'm coming. I'm not a spokesman for the president or his family, no. And neither am I a spokesman for the government. Okay, uh, I, I, I'm i a private uh, Liberian citizen, so I love my country and willing to support the foreign bash of my country. But uh, the reality remains, the president constructing his personal project it's not our public funding. They don't have to go through the bureaucracies that 
uh, 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 government project has to go through. Uh, for, for example, you know, if you want to build a, a, a road, right, in a, a community, that road got to go through a lot of processes, including you got to know that you have to do feasibility study for that road, right? You got to be able to what, determine uh, who's going, you got to send a bid out, you got to, uh, 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 people got to bid companies that will be a winner. And, and a lot of times, sometimes some of those uh, companies have to source uh, uh, funding from 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 uh, their banks and things to start the project uh, before the government can be able to refund them later and uh, all of those things. So if you answer this shit, send the government into power, my personal thing is going faster. You got my personal thing in. You, you anybody in government, you working, you, go, you want to pay your lay horse, your personal uh, whole project, you're going to consult anybody. You get so a it brings to a, 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 But those that are that cheap policies for all the go and talk about the person, the president, personal project. Okay, this, 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 this project we're talking about, my brother, it did not, the person did not really start. Anybody that know uh, that I got some idea in, uh, about that particular uh, structure. That project did not 100% started when George Weah became president. When the campaign was going on, there were there were works already on that uh, uh, ground going on. So you're talking, you're talking the about nice, the Nine nice Street project? I'm talking about the uh, uh, so-called, what you're ready, other people will say 60 uh, uh, condominium, other person say 49, now you say uh, 17 and this and that. Whatsoever the number is, is not even important to me. Okay. Mr. Ware, do you care to tell our audience the status of the military hospital? I listened to the executive mansion. They said that the military hospital will be dedicated on uh, Armed Forces Day, which is uh, February 11, right? So uh, we are in what? We're almost in December. So we just get what? Two, three more months. We're going to, they're going to dedicate the military hospital. And it's going to be not just a uh, uh, ceremonial something, but it's going to be well equipped. I think you are aware that our Chinese partners are, are offer to equip it. It's going to be sophisticated, which is going to cater to our uh, military personnel and their family, but I'm told it's going to go beyond the military and provide uh, services to uh, uh, other ordinary Liberians, which should be welcoming and should not be an issue of politics. All right, Mr. Rale, I'll leave it there. Folks, if you are following us yet, on focus on Liberia. My name is Anson Nsie, and I am the host of a new program here at Focus on Liberia called the Hour of Politics. Today I have with me Mr. Macaulay Worrell. He is a supporter of the current government and he's here to explain to us that despite of all the challenges, his government, he claims, is doing well. So we are now on the economy still. One another indicator that shows the economy is doing well is the issue of jobs creation. You had your policy document, the PAPD, and in that document, on um, uh, pillow two, you talk about job creation and actually pillar two is the economy and jobs. And in that document, you may declare that you will be able to create about 20,000 jobs in a year. And you are going close to two years now. Do you care to explain to us how many jobs that your government or this government has created so far? See, um, the issue of job creation is 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 a uh, it's not a it's not an ordinary thing that you know people always think it is. Job comes with a lot of things. The first thing for us to have more job uh, available for our people, we got to have most of all of our sectors working: the manufacturing sector, the fishery sector, the uh, uh, energy sector, obviously the. Almost every sector got to be working. So, are they not know, working? No, they are not working. You know, you, that's you are I, elected to make them work. So, why not? Exactly. I, I love that. I love that. And that's the thing the government got to take responsibility for making them work. But making them work requires a leading, leading certain foundation. If you take over a country, see, you and myself in America yet, 
we know what electricity or what the energy sector means for any economy. There can be no economic, real or uh, general economic progress in the absence of energy. When George we had took over, like I stated initially, we had less than 10% of our people having access to electricity. You know what that means? Even in America, you, you and myself are today, small businesses are the, are, the, are the backbone of the American economy. That means in Liberia today, a woman that, 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 that has her Kobo shop cannot afford to go and buy her fresh fish and keep that fresh fish the next day if, it ain't, if, if she, she was unsuccessful in selling all today because why, there's no current. Okay, so it, you cannot have jobs being provided in the private sector if we don't have reliable energy. So what is happening now? That's why I was making reference to the six transmission, the, 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 the uh, how you call it in here, the West African Power Pool project that is ongoing. Okay, I listened to the guy, I'm forgetting his phone in that is chairing our project, right? He said by December, latest March of next year, they are going to uh, commission all of those uh, uh, transmission sites and we're going to start distributing current from those uh, uh, sites. That means we are going to leave from the, 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 the small percentage for, uh, percentage for our people that have access to electricity right now. We're going to go what? People are projected that by the end of next year, there'll be over 50% of the Liberian uh, population or populace having access to electricity. What that means, it means what? The, 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 the small businesses and stuff in the different different communities, counties and stuff, will start to will start to make progress. Okay, people will be able to store their produce. People will be able to come and build small factory. You know how many people have went to Liberia before and, and, and wanted to build at least go ask these uh, Liberian people. I forget the guys in are running that uh, play what the place they napkin and tissue there somewhere on the uh, uh, Kagata road there. That didn't tell you what it costs to uh, maintain a generator. Or go ask any uh, manufacturing people that are in Liberia right now, let it tell you how, how expensive it is to, 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 to make progress. So they, to provide job for your people, they need the skills, the vocational and technical skills. One, they need, even if they have that skill, those that will come and bring these manufacturing uh, areas to help them get jobs, they need reliable electricity. So this government is trying hard to lay, look at how rigorous now the government is what, pushing a TVET program. That TVET program is going to provide too many technical skills for our people that will make them already. The government is tweaking the program in a way that we're going to provide skills that are needed. Unlike the, uh, the past, where we we're just, we're not even tailoring our, our, our TVET program to what our, 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 our economy needs. Okay, so this time around, we are tweaking it to make sure we provide skills to our people, the kind of skill that our people need for, for them to be readily available for any kind of a Mr. Ray, light or medium manufacturing that will go on in the country. Mr. Ray, are you saying, are you saying that your government as we speak is yet to start creating job and now laying no, the foundation for job that. creation? I'm not saying that, don't, don't, don't misquote me. Like I'm asking a question, Mr. Ware. Yeah, 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 yeah. And let me provide you the right answer, right? Are you aware that we had a, a steel a factory, a, a steel plant that was just dedicated by the president a few months back? Okay. That steel plant, from my understanding, is, is, is starting with, I think, out of 300 or 350 initially employees and uh, Liberians, and it's going to expand to by next year. I, I was, I, I think, if my numbers are right, to, 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 to go up to. 500 or more, but in reality, they are projecting to hire up to anywhere 800 to 1,000 Liberians when they go into a uh, full blast and how how good the, 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 the business sector will be for them. Okay. Thank you. So jobs are being provided. Are you also aware of the Chinese uh, factory that just uh, 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 were dedicated for the soft, uh, soft wood uh, manufacturing? I am told, in fact, the first 100 containers, 100 containers, will be shipped out of Liberia. You know what that means, right? Those people are already provided jobs for hundreds of uh, Liberians. And I listened to uh, the guy, the other- Mr. Ola, did there. you just say well? I said they have already provided jobs for hundreds of Liberians. They have already provided jobs, I said they will. But they also said, hopefully, they're going to, they want to expand uh, their project. 
and they're going to, if they expand the project, they're going to be able to hire over 1,500 uh, uh, Liberians. But just before hiring Liberians right now, they are providing skills for the Liberians that are working there, including our, our sisters. They have a very huge female, uh, female participation in, in the, uh, at the project site there, which is very welcoming. Mr. Well, so, my dear brother, development is not an event, it's a process. I it's agree. It's a process. The Liberian people got to understand that, look, it will not be a miracle. Nobody could have taken over Liberia at this time. Or last year, January, when George Riyadh took over and could have worked miracle. Forget about all the political blood. You take over a country where there is no skills or a brain drain. We suffer from brain drain in Liberia. There's no skills, there's no electricity, there's no water, nothing. And you say, Mr. Mr. Uh, Ray, uh, Ellen Johnson Salif, Ellen, Ellen Johnson Salif took over a country that mm -hmm. was dead economically and any kind of lay, if I can put yeah. it that way. Yeah. Uh, we had just come from war and she did her part. She didn't cry wolf as you are crying. You inherited a government, though you said broke, but at least you have institutions. You have a functioning government. You have some reserve uh, far above 150 million. And here you sit here and you cry. So yeah, yeah. why are you not just doing yeah. the people job? Yeah, she yeah, she yeah. You know, let me tell you, you know, I don't like to, I don't, I don't want to be, I, I don't like to go that route of people saying, oh, we should make too many comparisons between the past government and the present government, this and that. But, you know, sometimes for the sake of discussion, we go that route, you know. I don't like excuses or this and that. I'm not making excuses for even all uh, this government that I support. I'm just telling people that how things will work and how they should work and how we should exercise restraint and understand how it is, it's a, it will take process, right, and time. But that go to the issue of Ellen Johnson that you, since you brought it up. When Ellen Johnson took over, at the time we had the interim government, when Ellen Johnson took over, we already had, during Judy Bryant time, we launched a GMAP program, right? Which was a government management assistant program. I was in Liberia when the GMAP, the lack of Ellen's coffee, were the, were the first uh, foreign experts that went to work uh, on that GMAP program. When Ellen took over at the time, we, we, we never had the, the, for example, when Ellen, look, uh, let me give you the, let me give you the numbers. When Ellen Johnson took over, Liberia came, we had 15,000 United Nations peacekeepers going in Liberia. We had hundreds of NGOs going into Liberia, employing Liberians, because while well, we just came from crisis, so people came to help. So people came to help. So Ellen could not even come to complain because why? When she came, she did not meet anything, but she was why? Receiving everything that she did not meet there. Okay. Ellen came, Labro was getting uh, 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 hundreds of millions. The first donor conference that was hosted by uh, like the Labro government, uh, even uh, our standard bearer at the time, George, we are attending a race for half billion dollars for Liberia. We are not in that same situation again. So you got to understand. So when Ellie came, she didn't mean nothing, but she received everything. Ellie didn't say the government said the government was $16 billion in, in, in FDR, foreign direct investment. Where is, where, 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 come on, man, show me. Which Mr. Ware, talking foreign about industry. foreign direct investment is another indicator. Oh, oh man, uh, come on, guys, okay, let's be real. Mr. Ware, talking about foreign direct investment is another effort uh, that a government can really use to attract investment into the country and also create jobs. We were talking about jobs. Your government promised to create about 20,000 jobs a year. And as we speak, we are yet to get good news of you know, investors coming into the country. We've seen people come uh, for for visit, they come for assessment, and then they're gone, and then we don't get to see them anymore. What is going on? So, see, you see, uh, investors, like I said, Liberia is not a investment-friendly country. It's a fact. It's not a. It's not a. It's not. It's not a George we are thing. It's not a. It's not anything that people should uh, 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 use politics about. You know, Liberia is not invest. Let's look at the region there. The first thing in the region, Liberia, 
we got we got one of we are one of the least populated uh, country in that region. Besides being one of the least populated country, we are one of the countries in our region that fought war for many years. So people that uh, invest invest look investment and investment love certainty. So people are kind of unsure about or they are not certain about uh, Liberia. Besides that. We had the crisis that created brain drain, right? Like I stated before. Beyond that, we are lacking infrastructure development. We don't have roads. We don't have uh, electricity. We don't have reliable water. We don't have anything. So our country is not an investment friendly country, Liberia. And that's not the making of George. We had just been in power two years. And you think who is responsible okay. for that? So now it it is it is it is the responsibility lies in our our historical past, our our, our history. The mistakes we make, the blunder. If I look are at you our trying last to suggest years, that we, we have, have just we have had 12 years of, of over, we have OCD nations alone spent about nine billion dollars in Liberia for the last 12 years. But we don't, we lack all of these things that I just listed. Is that just, just we are not the president since 2005 or 2006 inauguration to 2017? Uh, no. So now it is just we are responsibility to make sure that we have all of those things that will make Liberia. Or investment friendly country. That's why I stated previously, that's why we are going heavily to provide infrastructure development for our people, like roads, take roads too. The, the objective of George Ria is to make sure Liberia is connected by, uh, by road in his first term. Every county capital should be connected to Montserrado County. Mr. Ria, on, on the issue of roads, on the issue of roads, we are we are yet to, to see that. Let's move to another uh, economic indicator. And then after that, we'll ask you uh, to grade your government uh, uh, from you know your government performance on the economy. Let's look at prices of basic commodities. You remember very well when prices started skyrocketing as a result of the exchange rate uh, getting out of control, the government released a list of about maybe 100 uh, commodities on the Liberian market, uh, you know, listing prices at which those commodities should be sold. And that did not even materialize because the, 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 the economic structures were not put into place. The measures were not put into place either by the Commerce Ministry or by the government itself. And so prices now are so high because the exchange rate, we can say, is the major determining factor of the, of the or the major determinant of the of the process on the market. So what what can you say to that? That this is the reason why our people are suffering. The prices are high. See, uh, uh, fortunately, I I've been in the uh, business environment of Liberia for many years. Good. You know, before we used to uh, at the Ministry of uh, Commerce. I talking about way before George. We are Ellen Joseph Ellen government. At the Ministry of Commerce, they used to have the price analysis division, which I think is still there till today's uh, date. And they used to go calculate uh, people uh, uh, commodity prices and tell them what to sell it. Then the question came of which kind of economy do we have in Liberia? And you know, people are, oh, is it, is it, is it a free market system or this and that, all of the debate, and you know, and when you have a free market economy, like we always say we have in Liberia, government don't impose on people what to sell their commodity. What government uh, does is you allow competition to be the determining factor of price. If somebody brings an uh, importer uh, a, a, a certain commodity to the country, take away all the monopoly. With our monopoly, Competition alone will determine the price, and and, and it work. And, and we see, for example, in Liberia, see you that here today. I can tell you, even as uh, recent as early Joseph Salita, do you know that you and I said we could not import uh, our rice to Liberia? Do you know that we could not? Go import ahead. Georgia government have created a, a, a environment that nobody got monopoly right now over any uh, basic commodity in the country. So that. With our monopoly, competition will determine what the price is. And price too is a function of what the what the economy can produce. For example, everything in Liberia import, we import everything. God, 
pepper, bean about, just name the rest, will import everything in Liberia. Okay, so once we are dependent on a foreign market, we always have fluctuation and, 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 and stuff in prices. So the issue of price, my dear brother, I cannot advise the government, even myself, to go and import on business people to and, and Mr. Red, five dollar, say ten dollar. I will allow competition to determine the price of any commodity. Mr. Red, that's why this government came up with the PAPD as a policy prescription for macroeconomic stability. And so this has given Liberians hope that by this time, going to two years now, or uh, the economy will stabilize, there will be growth jobs will be created and it's not happening instead things are deteriorating uh, economically that's by you know giving people very less hope let's look at the issue of salaries pitman by the government it is detrimental economically to our people we have lawmakers who have not taken pay for about what four months so tell us you show the government is handling the economy in a right way do you believe samuel Twe is doing a good job well <laughs> you see this government is, uh, okay let me let go to the issue of uh, uh, salary payment let me give you my own position uh the issue of salary payment it was kind of a quite unfortunate i did not like the fact that people went months without taking pay that is my position you know is is uh uh if you don't pay people on time it breed corruption like I said, at least I can say I have been around in Liberia not for decades, but for the short time I've been around in Liberia, I've had the opportunity. I, I ran uh, the biggest clearing forwarding firm for uh, in Liberia. They hold a Judy Bryant time, late uh, Taylor time, Judy Bryant time, up to uh, uh, so, uh, most of Ellen time. You know, and I know how corruption works and tries in Liberia firsthand. So. The issue of not paying people, I think that's unfortunate. And the government has to do better than that. And I listened to the final minister the other day when he said that going forward, they are going to be very current. So one of the things that I've always been doing of late is I always call my friends from the executive mansion, final ministry and stuff like that to ask them about, oh, this more coming to an end again, where, how far we are on the payment of, of salaries. So not paying people on time is indefensible. Uh, but the issue, some of the thing I was told was- uh, they had Ware, the whole You were saying something you didn't end it, and when you asked them, what did they tell you? Oh no, for now, as we speak, as we speak, for example, I know like people, I got friends that worked with ARA that did not take pay for months. Now they are paid in. I know friends that work with uh, different different entities that government are owning for months, but now the government have uh, 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 paid it up to, I think they are paid it up to the last time I spoke to somebody was up to uh, October. The October pay in fact was just, was just, was just uh, uh, they just received text message for the October pay. So I know that most entities of government pay are up to date. I know there are still few that are hurt people for other reasons, like I saw people talking about the issue of the housing authority folks, and you know, but as I try to investigate, I realized that people said it is more than, because the whole issue, you know, when the government came, there were people being added to payroll, all kinds of ways, and some of these additions were not properly done, so people have been affected. And, you know, my brother, when you go, you try to automate, I work here, I work for a Fortune 500 company as an automation, uh, automation engineer, okay. And I know when you try to leave from manual to automation, sometimes you got glitches and all of those things. So I'm told that because of the harmonization process, so all of those things affected the reason why people payment were not on time. But I pray that the government keeps her word that going forward, people will be paid on time because the failure to pay people on time will breed corruption. Mr. Grav, uh, I will now ask you uh, to grade your government on the economic indicators that we just discussed. Folks in cyberspace, if you are just joining us, or if you have been with us, this is the hour of politics on focus on Liberia with me, Anthony Sier, as your host. We have Mr. McCordy Wood here as our guest. Mr. Wood, we talk about job creation. Will you give your government A, 
B, C, or F in terms of job creation? You see, uh, to grade, we got to understand what we're grading the government. Shit, you know, maybe people Mr. don't We have discussed these indicators. Just give no, a grade level no, forward. No, no, Shit, listen. You know, shit. Shit, you know, it's easier to say, oh, I will grade it or uh, uh, this or grade it that. But in reality, shit, I judge you based on what I gave you. Okay. Mm -hmm. I judge you based on what I gave you. That is, that is, that is uh, how I look at things. What have we given this government? We gave this government a field country, literally a field country. Okay. So I cannot come and say in terms of job creation, I know that. If you it, look, there are people down there who are, I got relatives in Liberia, who some of them want a United Nations level, NGO level, they lost their job. Up to now, they are still not working. And you know, up to Mr. now, they are still, Mr. Ray, they are still not working. We got to move I forward. Say, if mm -hmm. I come here and I say, oh, I graded government this and that uh, in, in a favorable way, somebody might get angry, but they will not understand where I'm coming from. Okay. So in terms of job creation, I don't think this is the right time to grade a government in terms of job creation. Because why? You the have completed, right your government, your to, government to has completed almost two years of academic work. People. Your government has completed almost two years of political academic work. And you are telling me you can't grade them? No, because I, 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 I just explained to you why I don't want to attribute a specific grade to say, oh, a, B, C, D, no. Mr. Ware, because is there anything I, you are afraid of? I am just, I don't I don't want to appear to be, uh, 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 you know, not be sympathetic to my people. Like I said, I got relatives down there in the country that are out of job right now and things are tough. Some of them, I have to go beyond my own reach to, uh, to provide for their kids to go to school, to help with food and all kinds of things. Okay. So, but I know that if I will be grilling this government, it will be based on what we give this government. And based upon what we give this government to grade a government on that, I will not grade a government in an unfavorable way. But I don't want to be misinterpreted. That's the reason why I don't want to use any of your barometer of uh, A, uh, B, C, D, and stuff like that. All right. Let me feel right there, Mr. Red. That was the voice of Mr. Makoto Red, and I am Anthony C.A., the host here at Focus on Liberia on the show, The Hour of Politics. Folks, let us move to our next segment. Mr. Ware, your PAPD, there is pillow one called power to the people. I read that document and I'm assuming that you read it because you support the government. It's a brilliantly written document, I can say that. Uh, power to the people is said in that particular pillow, which is pillow one, to empower Liberians with tools to gain control of their life through the provision of opportunities such as education. I don't want to. I don't want to bore you with healthcare and all that. But let's just look at education. Do you think your government is providing the tools that Liberians need to empower them with skills, with the knowledge and know-how to be able to contribute? To their country in a positive way. Uh, let use the let use the University of Liberia, not only University of Liberia, public university and colleges, the tuition or free program, as a case study here. What is your impression about that program and how your government is handling or performing on that? So. Uh... Uh, uh, CA, I don't know, you said you, you want to limit it to what, uh, education, right? Yeah, because of that, time. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So, but let's go to where we are and where we were prior to this government coming. Do you know that uh, since the government uh, came to power, the uh, Liberian schools have performed. Now they are far from, uh, you know, people, when you say something, they start to misinterpret it. They are far from where we want them to go, right? But the, the performance, this gone, uh, West African, uh, I know they call it WASEC now, what we popularly know as WAEC. Do you know that their performances uh, uh, have increased greatly? Our schools perform better than previous years. And also, do you know that the Liberian uh, private schools uh, perform uh, better in mathematics than they have ever done? 
for the uh, since the war. All of those things tells you uh, about the effort being made by the government. Okay, but even beyond that, even beyond that, look at for example, we have in our country we we were lacking people in almost every uh, 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 specialty field in the medical area. When George Weah came, what he did immediately, he worked with the Ministry of Health and it took Liberians and sent abroad to go and gain skills in those areas that we are lacking. Okay, so that is why power to, giving power to the people, empowering those people to come, that will not have to rely on a uh, 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 neurosurgeon or uh, uh, orthopedic uh, uh, specialist to come and do certain things for us, but our own people will be capable and, 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 and take their, their country, uh, country's future in their own hands. So in terms of education, we are far from where we want to be, but I think with our politics, we all should appreciate the government for where uh, we, have, we are right now in terms of empowering our people in education. Yeah, I asked you specifically about the tuition free program. The tuition free program, you know, to be honest with you, my brother, I can tell you when the government took that decision, when the government took that decision, even the oppositions were commending the government for taking that decision. You know, but for me, I'm a technical thinker. I was not happy with that decision. Why? To be very honest, I'm a supporter of this government because I know one, especially for, look, it, you, the University of Liberia and uh, Liberia has been producing thousands of accountants, managers, public administrators every year. Those are not the people our economy needs right now. Those are not the people our economy need. Our economy need electricians, plumbers, or uh, 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 masoners, different you know, the, the vocational and technical areas. Let's forget about people. Let let encourage people to go into those fields. Those those are the fields that we got uh, the prospects in the future. So I was not impressed, but unfortunately. To tell you how deceitful everybody in Liberia, even the opposition were commending the government for that because why? They felt that it was a popular decision. I believe that personally, I think that was a political decision. I don't think it was a right decision, to be honest, that free tuition thing. But the like of your ANC, the Dillon, the, everybody were commending the government for that decision, right? Because people worry more about popularity in Liberia. People, people worry about popularity. They don't look at, you know what I mean? Look at how many additional millions government got to send to the University of Liberia and other uh, public schools than because of that, that decision. Where we have a very uh, 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 tight fiscal space. We have Mr. a very tight fiscal space when, when some of the loans that were taken by the previous government are maturing, we got to start paying them. There's no money to invest in other sectors. Then we come, we make those kind of a, a decision or a based on political reason. I think that was one of the decision that I still maintain that I was opposed to. I support this government in, in many ways possible, but I, I was totally opposed uh, to that decision. I think it was, it was based on politics, not economy. No, no scientific study was done for them to really analyze and say this would be the benefit if we make such a, a policy a, a statement. Thank you. The thing about the decision as was made by the president, many students, and even some opinion leaders have expressed concern. I know you talk about other people commending the president uh, for that popular pronouncement, but the issue of quality, others are saying that that pronouncement further undermine the issue of quality education. Quality has always been a problem at the university. I've seen video at the University of Liberia where you see armchairs and you see like tents on, on, on the main campus in some other areas where students sit to learn. That is our nation highest institution of learning. And so- uh, Sonny, Sonny. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, you know, you and myself, we shouldn't even waste our time on that particular uh, uh, topic because 
we don't have much of a dis of a of a of a, uh, of a disagreement on that particular matter. Like I stated, I agree with you. The quality uh, in our universities, we need to do better. It's a fact. Trust me. I uh, I don't like to sound. You know, I don't like to say anything negative about Liberia, but it is unfortunate. We need to do better in terms of the quality in our educational sector. And I know I will not say why I'm saying it, uh, but I can tell you that we actually need to improve the quality. And that decision, I don't think it helped. I don't think it helped at all in terms of the quality. So for me, I must, I must, I must admit that is one decision I repeat. I, I'm not in support of. I'm so not in support you, of. Are you saying that it was more of a uh, political decision. It was a political decision. My brother, we got to be true to ourselves and our country. That decision was based on political reason. I don't think it was, it was that look, that decision was not based on any scientific uh, 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 reason to say, oh, this, uh, uh, this are the benefit. I think we need that, for example, I, I've, been, I've been really thinking, I said, for example, that we need a lot of skills that even we don't have people to teach certain technical skills. Why can we take like that money we have to spend, right? Look, the University of Liberia got to reach a stage that at least it will be largely able to fund herself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That we can focus all of the public money that we got for education that we keep giving 14 million, 17 million, 12 million to the University of Liberia. I'm not saying it's bad, but the University of Liberia right now is not at a stage that is producing what the economy of Liberia actually needs. We need people in a vocational area. So let's focus on getting more MVTC across the country. That brings people in the country that have skills to uh, provide tech. For example, that, look, listen to the Indian team, they got a lot of skill. We can discuss with the Indian government. We send certain people uh, there to come and train our people to provide that because look, all the companies will say, oh, they will talk about foreign investor, foreign investor. When foreign investor can, they don't looking for, most of the, most of the time they need skillful workers. The, the Chinese factory that they built uh, down at that wood factory. I listened to, I was reading something on the factory where they talking about, they got to train people, even how to, uh, just to saw the wood properly certain way. They got to train a lot of people, hundreds of people still going through training for that. So we need to give people the skills that the economy needs to progress. And I don't think the University of Liberia is, yeah, the other area like the medical school, AM, Dr. Lati, yeah, those areas are making it free, that's good. And you know, those areas that we need people for, we, we oh, my brother, every year, all right, Mr. Will, 2000 or BSc accounting degree, all the things that, no, no, we don't need it. I'm not saying we don't need it, but we should not be funding it. People that want to That's, go to you, you, are, you, are saying, to you are saying that shouldn't be the priority right now. We should focus exactly. more on technical education exactly. because these are the kind of professions and skills that we we, we need to build our country. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Wray. That was the voice of Mr. Makoto Wray, our guest here today on the hour of quality here at Focus on Liberia. And my name is Anson Nsie. I'm the host here. Mr. Wray, we will be moving into our final segment. And our final segment, uh, for your information, it will also be based on one of the pedals of the PAPD. First of all, that segment is good governance. We researched the Good Governance Commission website, and they gave us a unique picture of the things, the pedals of good governance. And I will read for you and our audience where we will be focusing our discussion in this segment. Mm. It said good governance was established to ensure that government functions in ways that are accountable, mark that word, transparent, participatory, and responsive to the interests of the Liberian people in the provision of public goods and services using merit based system that promotes and adheres to the rule of law. So we'll be looking at transparency, accountability, a merit-based system, and the rule of law for our final segment. Mr. Ware, mm -hmm. we are talking about transparency. On our page four of the PAP, they wish to talk about good governance and transparency. 
the yeah. emphasis in that document, the first priority for pillar four said that the first priority will be to make Liberia a more capable nation or state. Mark that word, to make Liberia a more capable nation or state. I don't think you can agree with me that our country as we speak on this government is a capable state. Then the PAPD also had a second priority, which is the reduction of corruption, which speaks to the issue of transparency. And I'm not sure you can also disagree with me or anybody that corruption is not being reduced in this government. In fact, uh, corruption is more like being practiced even in the street. So let's go to the issue of transparency, starting with Liberia being a capable nation that can be able to manage its own affairs. <clears throat> now look at the issue of the 16B that was not managed. Our country, our leadership, our government is not capable of financial management. What do you say to that? Well, see, I hope the way you're compounding all of those things, you're giving a time to address. Oh, yes. You know, but yeah. uh, you see, good governance is subjective. You know, I I don't want us to dwell on debating that, but I think uh, you talk to any technician, it will tell you that the whole issue of defining good governance is subjective. It depends on, you know, what context and all of those things. But the reality remains, uh, there are certain things that we all we generally accept uh, should be the uh, indicators of good governance, right? You know, transparency, uh, freedom of speech, and uh, and you know, human rights things are generally uh, things that we look at as indicators of good governance. But uh, to address the issue of uh, transparency, I don't know of any shady thing that uh, we can attribute to this current government. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't go in the market, I don't run behind your, this, look, the first thing I tell people, look, my brother, I don't need favor for anybody in Liberian government. Even when I was in the uh, 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 leadership uh, 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 realm as uh, chief of staff to the then CDC chairman, you ask Akaros, you ask everybody, that's me. I'm an independent person. I always try to be uh, convicted by my own thoughts. So I don't need favor from anybody in the government, but the reality remains, most of the things that we will attribute that are lack of transparency in Liberia are based on what perception. And, you know, and I know public perception, we should take them seriously too, because a real American foreign, uh, foreign policy book written by uh, Jack, Read and yeah, uh, I read that book in 2004. And I love the definition he gave for perception. He said perception is an operational uh, reality. So taking that uh, uh, definition into consideration, I think the government needs to do better in terms of uh, uh, changing the public perception of, 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 of what they think the government is. But the government, nobody can really I heard you made reference of the $16 billion. If I was to work that day when the uh, $16 billion uh, uh, noise started, the first person that told me about that was uh, 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 a friend of mine uh, told me about that. Oh, my man, people eat $16 billion. I said, Liberia, $16 billion? I said, yeah, I said, my brother, look, come on, man. Don't you mean, look, we need to wait fresh. The reality remains, look, the 16 billion you must say talking about, we brought in our foreign partners, so we don't trust our own. Our foreign pastor, our partners conducted investigation and it told you exactly what happened. And those people who were, were responsible are undergoing prosecution. That's how good governance work. When you talk about good governance, it's about, it's about the respect for the rule of law. People are accused or suspected of committing wrongs or, in, or being involved in corruption can only be processed through the courts. That's good governance. So while well, here it's very same people who want to complain and they don't want to respect 
the institutions or the, 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 the uh, bureaucratic means by which we should observe these things. The president cannot kill anybody or the president cannot convict anybody. Only the courts can do that. People that were suspected or accused, they have been processed to court. That good governance, that's what good governance is all about. So let us respect the court process. When George Weah took over, the first time we heard about corruption in government, God, what was so happy? Those people were arrested and sent to court. The court what? Freedom, well, that's good governance. It's unfortunate. I felt so disappointed when I heard a lecture of my brother from Minnesota. Yeah, you know our brother very well that left to serve in the government, uh, Dwana Sion. And, and they got involved with all over uh, tape recorder and all. The government process in the court, they were released by the courts. That's good governance. We got to respect it. And I, I don't care whether we support it or not. So I don't know what the issues are. If you have facts, we can discuss the facts. But if you will go by emotions or perception, then I, I, I can't go that right with you, my dear brother. Mr. Ware, yeah. when my understanding from the crowd report is that about 2.5 billion of the total of 15.5 cannot be accounted for, cannot be traced anywhere. You explain that our people need to respect the rule of law and that's why it's taking place and that individuals who uh, the audit report laid the blame on squarely are being processed through the court. We understand, but what's about the issue of the $25 million? The $25 million, the recent statement from the government was that they were sending their report to the LACC. That was following the reports being released by the General Auditing Commission. The General Auditing Commission report was damning. The report listed institutions that the press, uh, the economic management team listed to have dealt with and to have also given some sum of money. But then the report from the GSC said that those institutions cannot be found on any planet. And so that meant that that money went to somebody. Mr. The president is yet to add on that report or even request or announce to the Labyrinth people the report from the LACC. So people feel that something went wrong and the president is refusing to add because we were told that heads were going to roll. What do you say to that? Oh, uh, like I said again, my dear brother, uh, I support this government, but uh, I stand for things that are good for the country. This, uh, issue of that so-called 25 million. But for some of our people who don't have a clear understanding of the 25 million, people only dub the whole thing as 25 million because that was the initial amount the, pres the president pronounced were going to be infusing the economy. But in reality, we did not uh, infuse all of that money. All of that money were not taken uh, from the uh, reserve, you know, uh, to be infused uh, in the economy, uh, you know, but we still call it 25 million. With that understanding, the uh, audit was conducted, the FIU, and in fact, the uh, people that spearheaded that investigation headed by uh, Alice Coffey and others, they came up with their findings and uh, the president sent it to GSC. GSC came up with her findings and the president sent it to the LACC. And my very self, I am as struck as you are till to this day that we are still waiting and, you know, I'm told that uh, the president is going to act. And uh, I know that, you know, when you delay in taking certain decisions, it, it starts to create a lot of public perception and misunderstanding and, and, and concept of, of what people think uh, 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 it should be or, or that is happening. But the reality remains, my very self, I am eagerly waiting to see what will happen on that uh, uh, report. Because like you said, you are very right. The uh, uh, GSC report said uh, says that people, some entities that were listed said the money that they transacted with the central bank wave were inflicted. Some were double, some were triple and everything, and you name it. So we need to understand some entities 
one thing we should put in context is the other the GAC audit report said all of the money was accounted for. I don't know if you know what that means uh, 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 in the context, but which means all of the money that were uh, infused, yes, they gave account of how it was infused in all of the entity, but where the problem was where some of the entities that were listed said the amount that were listed was not that amount that the transacted with the transacted with far less amount than what the uh, central bank uh, uh, listed in their report, which means people at central bank, the executive uh, 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 governor, the uh, executive director, the uh, 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 all of those people that are responsible, they need to give, they, they need to rather, they need to give account for that particular uh, 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 infusion money. We need to understand what mm -hmm. happened. So I agree with you on that. I don't have this agreement. I'm a Liberian, Liberia first. Liberia first. Mr. Rare, anything about the 25 million is that the money was taken from our reserve. The economic advised us to the president, I believe were the one who advised the president that given this exchange rate getting out of control, in order to stabilize the exchange rate, uh, we needed to take some money from our reserve and use that money to uh, reduce the excess labyrinth that are on the market, then they will lead to the rate being stabilized and also hoping that maybe it will have uh, led to a reduction in prices. And, and, and that was what they had advised the president and they carry on the exercise. And then you have all these discrepancies, you know, and what happened is that the process went off, the exchange rate went off, and the president is sitting right there. And this report first went to the PRT, and 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 Crow talk about it, and then you you have the the GSC talk about it, and then LACC again is just going around in a circle. The president can't act. You know this, this this shows that something is not right here. So if the president cannot, or Samuel Tua, who is the head of economic management team, cannot hold anybody, any of the honor men, accountable on this money, and then the president too cannot hold any of the economic management team members accountable, that shows that there's no transparency, something went wrong, and Liberians are sitting there scratching their heads. What is going on here? Anyway, uh, folks in cyberspace, this is the hour of so, politics. So, so on you, are just making, you are just making a statement and no opportunity to, to rebut or <laughs> Mr. 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 Rare, you are interrupting me. This is the hour of politics <laughs> on focus on Liberia. My name is Ansoni C. I have uh, my friend, uh, Mr. Makoda Rare here with me. He is a supporter of the government. So Mr. Rare, your final comments on this uh, 25 million dollars. Do you believe that the government handled okay. this 25 million dollar thing in a very fair and just- let me, let, me, let, me, let me provide my own uh, uh, uh little man understand you know, how uh some of those things that you talk about should work you talk about i agree like if, to start with first you know that i agree with you that we people uh need to get account for the the the, the inflated values that were attributed to certain entities on that uh, report obviously i support that people need to give account but for you to start to narrow it down to say oh samuel 12 was I, you know i don't like to even sound like uh, somebody supporting 12, but it's just that because I love things to be said the right way, so sometimes you're forced to appear like you're supporting people. Samuel 12, the, the, the economic management team, it's just, it just like a cabinet meeting where the cabinet come together and they decide on something to do for every entity kind of a responsible for their own actions. Okay. Samuel Twer, the economic management thinking together, they discuss and agree that we to help temporarily stabilize the exchange rate, let put let infuse some money in the economy, which Liberia has been doing for uh, even the early generation time we did it almost every year. But it just a lot of people are not knowledgeable, so that now we're hearing all the noise, right? Okay. They agree to do that. The central bank is the one responsible. The central bank is the entity responsible for, is the, is the monetary entity of government. They're the one went ahead and infused that money. Whatsoever uh, 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 unaccounted uh, transaction, the central bank got to give account and we shall support. And we shall support. 
but that's not the responsibility of the economic management team because the economic management team were not the one or uh, in the street carrying the money around to acting with this entity. It was a central bank responsibility. The final minister deal with the fiscal uh, side and the central bank deal with the monetary side. Mr. Ram, okay. Mr. Ram, you are aware, look at what you just said. The economic management team is now the one transacting with people. Mr. Samuel Twa, the finance minister, as head of the economic management team, is on record, on radio, for saying that they use unconventional means, that they did not go through the commercial banks. He said that they went to Sloan Community and Negro Town, West Point, and they dealt with money exchange bureaus around the city of Morovia and its environment to carry on the map of SSI. Mr. Twer is on record. So let me tell you, you, let me tell you what I heard Mr. Twer saying. Let me tell you what I heard Mr. Twer saying that maybe you're trying to spin, you know. You say I'm and trying to spin it? I said maybe, so I'm not, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not certain. No, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Hold on there, hold on there, Mr. Well, hold on there, Mr. Well. Mr. Well, hold on, I'm not spinning it. And this is something that is widely known. The tapes are there. When Mr. Twer said we use unconventional means, that we did not deal with the commercial banks, and that we went to small community, the tapes are there. So I'm not spinning anything. So listen, for you to say I'm spinning anything, that means you are not been paying attention, Mr. Well. No, 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 no. I have been, you know, and let me tell you something. Mr. Twer said they went, for example, just the other day I listened to him on um, uh, what you call the guy show, man, uh, with Rodney C. Uh, with Rodney C. He said that was on ELBC went, and Rodney yeah, had appeared to as a panelist. Exactly, 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 ELBC. And he said that they went ahead and decided as a team and the experts from central bank said to them that the best way for this to be effective we have been doing it they are the experts and they said they have been doing it for years if we use the the the, the, the form of our banking sector we will not yield the needed result because why the money that we need to affect this uh to, to make an impact the money outside there they are outside the formal banking sector and here i know our people most of our people don't like to bank, which is a fact. So, since so they are the experts that came with the idea, the economic management team uh, uh, bought the idea and they went ahead and they used it. And we actually saw the impact when they did that. The US rate came down for one for how long, Mr. Ray, for how long? Yeah. But listen, now you see, you keep referencing people, but you couldn't forget when the president was making a pronouncement the first time they made a pronouncement for infusing that money. The president himself said that this is not a long-term fix. It's a temporary fix. It was a temporary thing. So why you forget about yet understanding that part of it? He said, so when will we get a long-term fix to this issue? When will we the get long a long-term fix, fix? The long-term fix, one, one, we have the, 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 the market is flooded up to now. We don't even, we cannot give a count of how much money we have in circulation, which is unfortunate. That's the reason why the government wants, which is, of course, I know it's a separate topic, but that's why the government thinking about what going into, what printing new or, or, or money and stuff like that. Because what? Right now, we don't even know how much money in circulation in our library economy. Why so, we a government? The policy to why we to a government? A, 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 a reduction in the rate is kind of a difficult. Okay, because what? You and myself know the previous government had the first uh, uh, money in the economy. They want to print additional billions of dollars. And they didn't get rid of the first one. They put that uh, new money in the economy. So we don't really have an actual account of how much money we get in circulation, which means we cannot really take any monetary or fiscal policy that is informed by statistics. So to do that, that's why the government is taking on changing uh, the money, changing the currency. And hopefully we can have what? The new currency, we have what, uh, what you call uh, better security futures. And now with that uh, uh, new currency, especially since we're going into uh, 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 giving our people uh, incentive to be able to save and stuff to get good interest, my very self, with that new policy, most of my money that I make here that I, I, I use as saving, I'm going to start saving in Liberia because what? I want to be, I want my money to be able to accrue interest. So those are, that's a, that's a long-term fix. 
and especially with what investing in our our domestic uh, uh, output like agriculture like uh, manufacturing uh, all of this the fishery sector I, I think you are following with the japanese government i forget the exact amount because you know too many things happening now but the japanese government is going to provide a, a lot of motorized uh, 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 Boats and team to our future uh, men, our ordinary fishermen to leave from paying Kino now to uh, using a uh, motorized boat to go and fishing. So we need all of our sector to start to work for us to be able to stabilize our rate. And especially, trust me, people are underestimating it, but if the government can show, uh, can bring uh, 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 general integrity to the central bank and the banking sector, and with the higher rate they are, they are, they are offering now for people to, uh, uh, to be encouraged to save, some of us will start saving back home. Mr. Red, Mr. Red, I'll leave it there and go to some comments here. Uh, I will read some comments here. A.B. Wen said, ha, ha, ha. Now, good governor is suggestive when it comes to CDC being in power. Marie Quade, we are really teaching you Jerome Rabba, oh my God. And Jerome Rabba again, did you say so-called? Then we'll have uh, Thomas. Thomas said, this guy is not God-fearing. He lied because Joe, we are love above the love of a nation. Uh, we have Dakina said, really? This man lying too much. I believe they are talking to you. Uh, then Thomas again, all these sedition case lied a lot. So Mr. Ware, those uh, few comments that from our followers here in cyberspace, uh, trying to grade your performance and they are saying you're not telling the truth i will not allow you i will not allow you to comment let focus on the discussion um no no i'm not coming trust me man i i am above uh those kinds of things uh, petition. but i just want to uh, i just want to make a suggestion to you with regards to that okay I go just going forward it will be better you know uh if you really comments you read comments that kind of are contributing in a positive way to the discussion. And you know, instead of people that if you if you accuse somebody of lying, make one statement that counteract what I said that would make that once you say, oh the man he said this, oh the, this guy just talk about uh uh or uh, the factory that are open and employing hundreds of Liberians, the wood factory shipping hundred containers of, of, of soft woods to international market. Oh, that's a lie. Then you start to you you counter it by saying what is the, the, the fact about it. But to just oh the man lie lie. I know most of our people in America, yeah, they don't even they don't even know what happening back home there. They got no clue. But they just go by people saying, Oh, this is not the comment say people lie. Everything that I say here is evidence. Even if you go to the front page African newspaper, you go there, you will see some of the things that I'm telling you here. They are kind of the program, they get video recording for most of the things that I'll be telling you, I have said to you here. So to say that lie, well, I know people have Mr. a lot of things about George Weah, so you can't say anything. Mr. Weah, Mr. Weah, sorry, Mr. Weah, thank you. And let me fit right there, but uh, I don't think uh, you should be telling me what comments to read and what not to read. Our audience are the one that got us going. Uh, we can decide what comment to read and you know, we value our comments whether you disagree with your comments we will read it just as other people disagree with you and they are still listening to you because they value our show that was right? a suggestion so, though yeah uh no uh, we will read all the comments because we value everybody's participation uh the audience regardless of how derogatory it is Oh, they didn't insult anybody. Uh, I think they were lying. I didn't say they did. I'm just saying you said you read all of the comments. So I'm saying regardless of how derogatory it, it, it would be. Well, let leave, let leave it be. there. Let us not go back and forth on that. Let's go okay. back to the issue. Yes. We're on the issue of accountability still. I'm sure you are aware of the Claritan project when the president uh, decided to re-roof those zinc shacks in the community of Gibraltar where the president uh, once lived. Uh, you are also aware that Mr. Weir lived there and he became an icon. He played football, he earned millions, and he did not re-roof those zinc shacks until when he became president. 
And when that pronouncement was made, we were told by the government and some surrogates of the government that Mr. Weir has used a personal money. Later did we know that that money came from the final ministry and there are records to that effect. And Mr. Weir took our people money, something that was not budgeted and he used it to re-roof Zinc Sharks in Claritown. What do you say to that? <laughs> no, see, uh, you see my dear brother, uh, uh, you know, unfortunately, Liberians love to make uh, uh, comments that are not. I live in Gibraltar. My stepfather uh, used to be a national team goalkeeper. Uh, Mr. Ure, this was reported. Not like Rob I come in, uh, was reported. No, no, you missed it. I, I, I'm talking to you. I'm not talking to someone else. You know, mm -hmm. you said that, oh, George, we are all the time he played football. He didn't do uh, nothing. And uh, he got to be president and this and that, which is not true. That's why I was I giving you the reference now that I personally live in Gibraltar. Okay. Okay. And I was in Gibraltar when uh, 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 George Ria went to Europe. And I know you go to Gibraltar, George Ria spent so much on the people of that community during his, uh, his, his glory days. What qualifies so much? He, he, he gave money for them to build school. He, uh, Gibraltar, if you know Gibraltar, it's a, it's a community that suffered from a uh, lot of field from the drainages and stuff like that. There were a lot of times that Joshua gave money there for us to improve the drainage system and all of those things in Gibraltar there. Some of the money were not uh, wisely used. People ate there, people took advantage. They did a lot of things. He empowered a lot of people from that place. And a lot of people he empowered from that there. So, I live there. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not quoting somebody. I'm not quoting. They say I gave him my own experience as a former resident of Gibraltar. Go there, you ask Gaddafi. They had a coming there. Uh, my stepfather Edward Paddy Dixon used to live not too far from George Ria's late grandmother's house. So I know firsthand. But I go to the issue. You say surrogates. Those surrogates, I don't know who they are specifically, but well. A lot of people go out there without the right information, without the right uh, authority, and they make claims. Okay, but I know that the president's office or the finance ministry that at least should be making official statement on those things never said that the president was going to spend his own money. Did I hear people saying it? Yeah, I heard it, but I did say it. People say a lot of things. But the right authority never made such statement. So I cannot, I cannot fault the government. So, so Mr. was that a national project? Did. Because we were well, made to we were made to believe that it was a personal initiative by the president to help residents of. believe by who they say. Mr. Red, just respond to the question. Hey, okay, so made to believe there, yeah, but you, you just I don't want to rely on the say that, but I am telling you, the official people from the Ministry of Finance or the Ministry of State for Presidential Affairs never, ever said that the president was going to fund that, uh, that roofing project for his own pocket. Every budget, every budget, they are, they got, they got, they got, they got certain money that are uh, uh, placed in the budget. Uh, are you insinuating that it was something like a budget line for that project? Oh, well, uh, well, uh, that's the that's the statement I'm making. I'm telling you that every budget year, I was in the legislature from 2009 up to 2014. Okay, and I know that every budget year they put money in there for uh, I forget the right. I, I'm still kind of uh, missing the right choice of war, but you know, it's almost like for unforeseen situation and this and that. And you know that the president gives the president that discretional leverage to spend certain money for certain reason. Okay, so obviously. That money came from the budget. Okay. So the question should be that the money benefited the Liberian people, where people or uh, uh, underprivileged people in our society life positively affected by such project? And the answer is yes. So I don't know what the issue is. You know, it's not like somebody went and stole money from somewhere. Nobody's that we should be discussing real things. You know, real All things. All right. Mr. Red, thank you. Let Leafy Red Dead and the folks in cyberspace following us here at Focus on Liberia. We are here 
on the hour of politics. We have gone more than an hour and the name of this program is called the hour of politics. So we will not hit two hours, then our name will be changed. Uh, Mr. Rev, we have 10, mini 10 minutes left. Uh, if we go over that 10 minutes, then the name of the program will be changed to hours of politics and we don't want to do that. Uh, it's a pleasure to have have you for a little over an hour now. And I think you have been able to make your case. Uh, but we will bring this question back that you refuse to answer. And that was the purpose of us inviting you here. You can choose not to answer the question again. You have explained that given all odds to summarize or paraphrase all that you said, your government is performing OK. So if your government is performing OK, what grade Will you give this government, even though your own lawmaker, Senator Sir Joseph, is saying that the hardship in Liberia is out of control, that people are suffering. Anywhere you go, people are suffering. And yet, you have the courage here to propound that your government is doing okay. What grade will you give your government? You see, uh, I, I hope those that are just joining us will not listen to the premise of your question and try to uh, think that, oh, I'm saying that everything in Liberia is okay. No, I did not uh, make any statement. And I would, I would tell you, I don't even need uh, Senator Sir Joseph to tell me that things are high in Liberia. See, for you to be in America and don't know, especially a guy I mean, uh, that loves my country and my people, and I know that things are high in Liberia then, you are a selfish and evil person. I know firsthand because I know people in Liberia that never used to call me to ask me for a dollar. Now they can call me and sometimes constrained to go beyond my capacity and even uh, 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 do the extra for them. So I know things are hard. I got my mom there. I got my daughter over there. I got my, I got my family there. So I know things are hard. But I'm saying this are not hard because George Weah became president. No. Look, uh, Professor, uh, Professor Jules Dopo, I love one, one. He said, don't blame the place you fought them. Blame the place you storm your tools. You heard that before, right? What that means to, to, to correlate it with our discussion. George Weah is not the place we, 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 we George Weah is where we fought them. The hard time in Liberia now, to, to correlate it with Professor Jones, Dopo Fireball, the hard time in Liberia on a George Real government is where we fought that. But we stomp our toes doing early justice early time. Then when we stomp our toes, that was the time that we had all of the billions that are, and we did not invest in agriculture, we did not invest in healthcare, we did not invest in education, we did not invest in road connectivity. We all did not invest in anything. We were just paying people huge sums of money. Unfortunately, so I know that things are high in Liberia and I will always acknowledge that. But I am saying we need to give George Ria government the opportunity to change things around, which they are doing gradually. Okay, they are doing gradually. Electricity, we are about to see miracle next year in the electricity sector. Another thing I want to touch on quickly before our time finish, we talk about George Reactor, about Liberia will not be spectator. I hear people saying, oh, they try to make satire out of it. The reality remains, look at today. I was speaking to a Liberian man around a, 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 a construction a firm in Liberia, road construction firm. He said, since they been down there, George Reactor government, the amount of contract, road, and I told him uh, before, the only road I used to get a Liberian company was what, uh, uh, to go greater dead road. But he was telling me, he said, look, my man, since John, we are talking about the amount of asphalt road project, quota, let me put it in Liberian with quota road project, they have given to Liberian company, this government, it's unprecedented. We got lots of Liberian uh, are being, we are empowering our people, but these things will take time. It requires the collective effort of all of us, you and I, Anthony C. We, yeah, we're in this country, let's build a country, be like me. I told you with the new policy, they, they coming now, Every money, tell my wife, every extra money we get every year, if we can raise $50,000 here and save it in Liberia with 26 
uh, over 20 percent interest rate you know how much we're going to get free for our saving so that is how we contribute to our country that's my point so if i will read this government for the sake of uh, of you my host maybe that would please you i can tell you that this government is not doing excellent but this government is doing good hello 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 Mr. Ray, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, thank you. I was just saying, uh, that was the voice of Mr. Macaulay Ware, our guest yet, saying that this government is doing good despite of all the economic challenges, uh, prices are skyrocketing, the exchange rates is in the roof. People can't find jobs. People are not taking pay. Even government officials, the senators have not taken pay. For, for, for four months, National Housing Authority has not taken pay for 10 months. And Mr. Ware is saying, despite all of these things, the government is doing Who told good. you that National you, Housing Authority has not taken pay for 10 you months? You be the judge. Mr. Ware, again, it was a pleasure having you, <laughs> your concluding statement. Okay, uh, to conclude, I want to say thank you, my dear brother. I hope we as Liberians can come you know, and regardless of our uh, ideological differences, our political affiliation, we can discuss and contribute to our country positively. I'm saying uh, to uh, my fellow Liberians, Liberia is our country. Like me, as an individual living in the US, I'm going to play my part, contribute towards my country. I know that it's going to be, uh, it's going to take time and process for Liberia to make progress going forward especially as we go with our new uh, monetary policy monetary policy that will be initiated as an individual i'm going to encourage a lot, a lot of my friends and family in america and across the world to start to save back home as we save back home we gain uh, 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 interest on our saving and also we help to have more money in our economy for 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 for, for, for different projects and investments and all that stuff back home and I know my people back home, things are tough. It is very, very tough, very, very tough. Unfortunately, we pray that God will guide our president and our people mindset also. We can uh, develop our mindset and change our mindset to improve the current situation of our people. But I want the people back home to understand that all is not lost. We are getting there by next year, before next year end, we're going to have over 50 to 60% of our people having access to electricity. Before next year end, we are going to increase uh, the amount of people connected to power bond drinking water. And when you have reliable electricity, it kind of a spur growth in uh, uh, the private sector, including individual businesses and stuff like that. So. But it takes all of us from abroad back home to make the uh, change that we want. So thank you very much for this opportunity, my dear brother, uh, Sonny. And I hope that uh, anytime you can call me and anybody, we can agree and disagree on the way forward for our country. Thank you, Mr. Ware. We here are uh, focused on Liberia. Uh, I am so honored to have had you uh, to explain to our people that your government or their government their government is doing okay that's part of the challenges and so that will do it for us yet i focus on liberia with me your host for our program here which is the hour of politics my name is Anson Sier, and our guest was mr macaulay Ware. Uh, this is how we draw down the curtain uh, with this music So folks in cyberspace, uh, this is how we draw down the curtains on the program, the hour of politics on Focus on Liberia. Enjoy your music and in a brief moment, that will do it for us. Thank you for sharing your evening with us. We appreciate you. Focus on Liberia is here weekly. The hour of politics comes on every Tuesday 
here on Focus on Liberia. Thank you for watching. And that would do it for me here on the Hour of Politics on Focus on Liberia. My name is Anson Seal, and bye-bye for now.